Hi and welcome. I'm Sarah. I'm one of the pastors here at WMB Church, and we are so glad that you have joined us in our online platform this week. It is good to be together to worship, to learn, and just to have this time to set aside for God and for journeying with Him. We have lots going on on this website. You can find out all kinds of ways to get in touch and stay informed. If there is something you would specifically like to let us know about, we'd encourage you to use the Get In Touch form. You can fill that out and someone will be in touch with you this week. We have a number of events and things going on. It is November, it is Christmas time is coming, so there's a few things that I want to highlight for you. One is something we have this year called Advent Mondays. Waiting. We've done a lot of waiting this year. This Advent, let's wait for and celebrate and anticipate the presence of God, Emmanuel, God with us. You can join us on Mondays for these 20 minute experiences. They start tomorrow night, but you can still sign up. We're gonna reflect on scripture, light a candle, sing a carol, all on Zoom. You can participate as a family. It's a friendly mini service. You can come from wherever you are, your dinner table, your bedtime routines, work, whatever that looks like for you. You can sign up at wmbchurch.ca slash Christmas. From Jesus with Love is our annual Christmas party, which like pretty much everything else this year looks different, but it's been fantastic. We've put together um, baskets for families, parties in a box and you as a congregation, like you always do, you have risen to the challenge and provided you have stepped up to meet the need. We still need a few more gift cards purchased, and you can do that online at wmbchurch.ca slash fromjesus. Thank you for your generosity, and thank you for continuing to spread the good news so many different ways this Christmas season. Well, even though it is November, it is indeed the beginning of Advent, and so we are going to light our first Advent candle today. We're going to hear from Ben and Wendy Smith two of our Barnabas interns this year, as they light the first candle. Emmanuel, God with us, a promise kept, a child. By definition, a baby is dependent on adults for everything, food, shelter, protection, and love. A baby is unable to use logic and reason. It needs constant attention. But the baby Jesus, this child, created the world. Imagine, he is the creator of the world, and suddenly he feels cold and hungry. Imagine, becoming human was not a twist of fate or a punishment from a higher being. It was a choice. God chose to give up everything to become nothing. This child was a king, a king in a dirty stable, wrapped in rags, but a king with a plan. This child would bring hope, not just a wish, but the confidence that God would defeat Satan, that good would win over evil. This child would bring peace, even in the midst of great suffering and trials, a peace that assures his followers that he is in control, even when it feels like nobody is. This child would bring love, a love that would never be taken away, a love that is beyond our understanding. And this child would bring joy, for he would deliver us. Lord Jesus, there is much we expect this and every holiday season. Much we put our hope in outside of you. Joy we try to create for ourselves. Peace we look for by avoiding our pain. And love we try to control rather than receive. This Advent, help us to fix our eyes on you. Remind us of who you are, the King of all. Kings and the tiny baby in the stable. The hope of the world, the lasting joy, the deepest peace, and the greatest love. Amen. We're so glad you're joining us for worship today. Jesus, we love you. We love to sing your praise. We want to shout for joy when we think of your goodness and your love. We want to declare that 
our fear and our darkness has been put aside by the amazing power of your grace and your goodness. So come on, sing out with me wherever you are today. Let's worship the Lord our God. When darkness tries to roll over my bones, when sorrow comes to steal the joy I own, when brokenness and pain is all I know, I won't be shaken. No, I won't be shaken. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand.
take a moment to take up our offering. We say it every week, but we really do mean it. Thank you. Thank you for the ways you have partnered with us. Thank you for giving financially. As we want to give our whole lives to Jesus, we know that part of that is our finances, and we are grateful for the ways that you have been generous. This is our offering for our general fund. Uh, later in the service, we are going to have our Barnabas offering. And friends, the stories that are coming, Oh, they are so beautiful. I got to participate in helping film them, and it was such a joy to hear from our Barnabas staff and all that has been going on in their lives. Also in this message, not only are you going to hear from Chris, but we're going to hear from John and Jam Coffey, who live and work in the Philippines and some of how God has been moving in their midst. And it is so good to hear the ways God is at work in all kinds of ways in our world. Let's pray. Jesus, we want to open our hearts and minds to you. We want to hear from you wherever we find ourselves today. Holy Spirit, would you be the one? Would you weave all of these things together so that more of your good news can be revealed in this world? We pray in your name. Amen. Un discípulo al cual durante los 10 años que llevaba en el ministerio, el Señor ha puesto en su corazón un especial amor por las naciones. Durante el desarrollo de misiones a corto y largo plazo, ha tenido una transformación personal que lo ha llevado a participar activamente en el soporte de misioneros en diferentes iglesias. 주님께 속한 분들은 이 땅의 많은 나라들을 사랑하고 서로 다른 인종들을 따뜻하게 대하며 천국의 백성으로서 만국과 만인들을 복음을 통하여 주님께 오게 하는 주님의 역사하심을 우리는 알아야 합니다. 하솔 쉬게르 소지 케다갈 파이 멜랄 모흘레프 다 홀레 고스타르샤스 니션 다한데 니아즈 제디 자메 마시히아 برای مبارزه با برتری بینی فرهنگی و تعصب نژادی که هر دو صدی در برابر گسترش پادشاهی خداوند در جهان هستند می باشد. هنرابی اولا کریستوفر سیلر مکی نادی هرلی اولا کریستوفر هلی خوانی کم پروپی کارسینی اورن نری ویت کندرار کرد. wanafunzi wa miaka kumi ambaye anakuwa moyoni mwake jali mataifa mara kwa mara anaombea mataifa mengine na vikundi vya watu ulimwenguni kote akielewa kuwa wanafunzi wote wa Yesu ni sehemu ya familia ya Wakristo ulimwenguni nje ya kuta za kanisa la mahali pilipo
Welcome, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about something that's so near and dear to my heart. God's care for the marginalized in our community and around the world. You're going to hear stories from some of my good friends that work on our staff and some of our missionaries around the world that I've learned so much from and care so much about. So I'm glad you've chosen to join us as we finish off our series all together now. And talking about our 10-year disciple characteristic of our vision and heart for the nations. As we talk about our global partners around the world and what it means to learn from them and have an ongoing posture as a community that we would grow together with our global partners in learning from one another. In just a moment, we're going to talk to our missionaries in the Philippines, John and Jam Coffey, who are making some people in our congregation grandparents again and aunts and uncles. And I know there's going to be some family watching today. So welcome. Quite a number of you have been there to work alongside them in their incredible discipleship work as well. And I know you're on the edge of your seat for that. Many of you have worked alongside our Barnabas missions team that's also going to share later today. John and Jam are working amongst the urban poor living in the shanty towns of Manila in the Philippines. The work they're doing is incredible, and we continue to learn from them how to practically live out our Barnabas missions to the marginalized in KW as a church family. Church, we've been saying all throughout this series that the nations have come to KW, and as a church family, we recognize that we live in a blessed country and to whom much is given, much is expected. And so we want to talk about Jesus' heart for the poor and marginalized today and our call to be his hands and feet in KW and around the world. So let's get right into it and talk to John and Jam about what they're doing in the Philippines. Really, the main focus is education. And as Jam mentioned, we want children to become educated and responsible leaders. So it's one thing to help these children finish their schooling. Um, our child sponsorship program is our main program for children who otherwise wouldn't be able to go to school. They can't afford a daily transportation on what's called a jeepney, school supplies every year, lunch money, uniforms. So we provide that through our wonderful supporters. And besides that though, we want them to be responsible leaders as well. So mentoring, discipleship, leadership training is a very huge part about what we do at IT Tender. So through our educational programs, we're really, and by the grace of God, we're transforming at-risk children into agents of change. Mm -hmm. and, and again, by at-risk, I mean, these are children that if they're not in school, they're at a very high risk of dropping out of elementary school. Most of our children in our programs, their parents never finished elementary school. And to help them finish not only high school, but we also have university scholarships to see that um, to see the joy of their family and these communities celebrating even just one child, but, but to see it for so many children, it's a blessing. We're really providing tools that empower the poor. So absolutely being holistic is important. And while education may be the main focus, of course, a hungry child uh, isn't going to make for a great student. Um, so we help them uh, with nutrition, um, mentoring, uh, spiritual guidance through discipleship. But again, ultimately, we're providing an education. Uh, we want to empower them through an education. We want to disciple young leaders. We want to empower young people to be responsible, confident, and godly examples in their communities. We want to give them opportunities to serve as well. So we don't want them to see themselves as just recipients of programs. I know that can be the temptation. That may be what it looks like um, when you hear the vision and mission, but what's wonderful about what IT Tender is doing, what God is doing through IT Tender these days, is it's flipping that around, and we are training these young people, these youth, to serve others. So whether you're poor or not, I really believe you have unlimited resources to give other people. When I say resources, I'm not just talking about financial. I mean your time, your spiritual gifts, your abilities, your energy, your passion. And so these youth, the very kids who have, are being sponsored to go to school, 
who are living in extreme poverty. Most of them don't have running water or electricity. They are the ones that are also volunteering in our programs. When we have a, a kids camp, the youth are co-counselors alongside us. When we have workshops in the summer, the youth are teaching dance and guitar and vocals and art because we taught them years ago and now it's their turn to step up. We've seen incredible resourcefulness. There are many times also where I wanted to be the hero. You know, I saw someone lose a home or a job. I wanted to say, you know, let's step in. And my staff, much more intelligent and perceptive and uh, brilliant than me, say, Just, let's wait a moment. Let's talk to them. Let's see what's their plan. Let's don't uh, underestimate the resourcefulness. When we come and say, we're here for you. What do you need? How can we help? And we help uh, in prayer and in practical ways. What we've seen after that is that these families are so much closer to us. And there's no strings attached. When we give this help out, there's no strings attached. But the thing that um, amazes me and probably shouldn't is that after these tragedies, more people start attending our churches because um, they see, you know what, maybe they're not just after, um, you know, the tick of a box of I, I saved someone, but you know, they really care about my job, about my home, about my family. And um, it's, it's been incredible how close we've become with these communities through disaster and how close they've become with God. Thanks, John and Jam. I'm always so blessed by your ministry and discipleship amongst the urban poor in Manila. I remember last spring getting uh, Facebook Messenger notes from you guys about what was going on and seeing pictures and, and just feeling so compelled and so moved to uh, just get involved in what I could do and pray for you guys more. And, and now to hear stories again, how God is moving amongst this tragic situation that the Philippines is facing, uh, both from uh, COVID and the weather. I mean, it is uh, drastic what you've had to go through, and we just feel for you so much. I look forward to continuing to learn from you and how to disciple people in the midst of just uh, absolute suffering and devastation and in circumstances that are so difficult to even imagine. Church family, the Bible mentions the poor over 300 times. God's heart and care for the poor is throughout the scriptures. God's broken my heart for the poor on so many occasions. I know when Adrian and I first moved into Hamilton, into our first place, we used to bag lunches together and take them down and eat lunch with those on the streets in Hamilton together on our Saturdays as a young couple, learning what it meant to love the people that God loves so deeply in our city. So John and Jam, we thank you for your incredible ministry amongst the poor in the Philippines and WMB. We thank you for your generous ongoing partnership with missionaries like this through our general fund. Let's take a moment and look at a few of those scriptures about God's heart for the poor together. The first I want to look at comes from the brother of Jesus, James who was speaking in his book to a church filled with people from every socioeconomic strata in society. And they were trying to figure out what it meant to be equals. What does it mean to be equals when society doesn't view you as equals? When your socioeconomic strata is different and you're actually placed in different positions of authority and leadership, and yet you need to submit to one another as followers of Christ. And this is what the church is wrestling with, what James is trying to figure out. And in James 2, 14 to 18, he says this. He says, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith 
by my deeds. James was encouraging the church to continue to meet one another's needs, but also doesn't limit it to physical needs, which he seems to assume they're already meeting as a church. It's like he's saying to them, because you know you should meet one another's physical needs of food and clothing, and that's obvious to you, let me build on that. Your deeds of faith should continue that and do more for one another. There is this holistic picture of care James is wanting us to grasp. And really he's building on this understanding from Jesus' teaching on meeting one another's needs and living generously is a basic principle of the Christian faith. In fact, Jesus, when he talked about Judgment Day in Matthew 25, 34 to 40, he told it this way in a story, in a parable, for us to understand his heart and vision. He says, Then the king will come to those on his right. Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or need clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. What a beautiful picture of judgment day for those that put their faith into action and love others in a generous way, the way that Jesus has loved us and generously given everything for us. Mother Teresa, a nun who worked in the slums of Calcutta, India, who won the Nobel Peace Prize for her humanitarian aid to the poor, said this before she passed away about this passage. I never look at the masses as my responsibility. I look at the individual. I can only love one person at a time. I can only feed one person at a time. Just one, one, one. You get closer to Christ by coming closer to each other. As Jesus said, whatever you do for the least of my brethren, you do to me. Pastor Sarah White said to us earlier this fall, what's the one small step that you can take? Mother Teresa and Jesus are really calling us to love people and meet their needs in practical ways to take that small step for the one person that we see. In fact, they believe there is no separating this from our faith as followers of Jesus. It's an outpouring of God's generosity shown to us when we respond to others' needs around us. In the book of John, we get a similar message. John was Jewish, and in the Jewish culture, it was the normal practice to set aside a significant portion of your income to care for the poor, the orphan, the widows. And this was all based on God's law, which had been passed down from generation to generation. They got it. Now, John is writing to Gentiles, non-Jewish people, who are not raised in the Jewish tradition of this generosity and following God's laws. This was all new to them and challenging for the Gentile churches who are learning how to value everyone as equal, to see others as themselves, to actually learn how to love our neighbor as ourselves, not as a neighbor, but as ourselves, to want for those that are in need what we'd want for ourselves in the same circumstance. So John writes in 1 John 3, verses 16 to 18. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. So let me walk through those three verses with us in a little greater depth today, because I think they're so practical in the message that they're sending to us today. In this passage in 1 John, it starts with verse 16. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. 
Generosity towards others stems from our understanding of what Jesus has done for us on the cross in laying down his life for you and for me. It's like John is saying to us, give to others proportionately to how you feel about what Jesus has done for you on the cross. I mean, think about that with me for a moment. What would it look like for you to lay down your life in a way that was proportionate to how you feel about what Jesus has done for you? How thankful are you? What does it mean for you to give fully in response to the cross? Time, talent, treasure. Giving all of it in response to the cross in a way that is proportionate to how you feel about it. To how you feel about his love for you for no other reason. Then in verse 17, it continues, If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? In other words, this is so fundamental to what it means to be a follower of Jesus, to walk in the ways of Jesus. We understand the direct relationship between giving material possessions to those in need and our love for Jesus himself. A love for God equates to a love for our neighbor, to seeing everyone as equal and wanting the good you want for yourself, for your kids, for them, for their kids. If God's spirit is in you, it should be a reflex reaction to help those around you in need. Maybe that means carrying fruit or a granola bar. If you see someone actually physically asking for help on the streets, or maybe it means considering what it means for you to give your time, talent, and treasure to those in need around you in a more formal structured way through our Barnabas missions program at WMB. Or maybe in your city, if you're listening to this outside of the KW region. Finally, in verse 18, dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. It's not enough to talk the talk. We have to walk the walk. We cannot just plan or wish or intend to help. We have to actually get involved and practically live out our faith. To give generously with our time, talent, and treasure to pray for, give, and serve those who are marginalized because it is a basic part of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And at WMB, we do that through our Barnabas missions. For those of you who are not familiar with this ministry, this is our local outreach to refugee supports and housing. It's coaching and individual supports to those who are in financial need, and we help them physically, relationally, emotionally, spiritually, and financially. It's Cheerful Spoon Soup Company. It's Girls and Guys Connect. It's Learn English, Make Friends. It's ESL Bible Studies. It's From Jesus with Love. And it's Adopt a Family and so much more. So in just a moment, I'm going to introduce you to our Barnabas leaders at our church. Some of my friends that are leading some of our volunteer heroes and how they're living out their faith in our community today. Our staff team that lead all of our amazing volunteers that help in this ministry to the marginalized in KW, the poor, the refugees, and new Canadians. This is core to our mission as a church. And each year at this time, we invite you to partner with us to pray, give, and serve. But before we formally challenge you to do just that, I want our team to share with you the story of what God is doing and help you to understand what we're doing together and helping others. Let's listen to the story together. My name is Wayne Porty, and I'm pastor of Barnabas Individual Supports. A lot of what I do is journeying with about 40 households on a monthly basis toward long-term well-being, and I'd like to tell you about one of them. I first met this young woman at the start of 2020. She was keen in her mid-20s with a one-year-old and about to have another baby. 
A month later, she emailed, I've completed the finance sheet you gave me and I figured out some goals. I would love to set up another meeting. I just gave birth to my daughter yesterday, but I'm feeling okay. We met a week later and we worked through her financial goals like tracking spending, her physical goals of going for walks with her babies, and her emotional goals of writing poetry to process her anxiety. At each meeting I pray for her and help with grocery cards to facilitate movement toward her goals. Then COVID hit, which like for many people made everything harder and heavier for her. She's been facing greater isolation, trying to raise two kids under two on her own, aggravation of her anxiety and emotional exhaustion. We've been connecting through regular video calls where we work through positive coping strategies when it's so easy to turn to harmful ones, connecting with resources in the community, which are now even more limited, and how to make money stretch a little further with a spike in basic living costs. Although this practical approach is important, we make it clear that Jesus can offer peace, hope, and strength in a way that only he can. There have been setbacks along the way, but she continues to move forward, and we are both blessed to be on this journey together. She even started back to school this fall in a trades apprenticeship. This is just one household out of over 40 that we journey with intensely each month. Each one has its own unique circumstances, struggles, and opportunities. And all of this is only possible through your generous support. Thank you. Hi, my name is Stephanie McGregor, and I am the director of Barnabas North Waterloo. Barnabas Missions North Waterloo is a ministry that connects and builds relationships with folks living in low-income neighborhoods in the vicinity of our Waterloo site. When I think of this ministry, I think about three concepts, recognizing dignity, valuing empowerment, and offering choice. We recognize the dignity of each person because they are created and loved by God. Honoring dignity involves empowerment. When our starting place is acknowledging that folks living on low income have skills and talents and knowledge given to them by God, then we make spaces that empower. Spaces that empower folks to use their resources, their skills, their talents and knowledge to better not only their own lives, but the community around them as well. Dignity is also honored through offering choice, allowing people to express their preferences. It can be easily missed, but it makes all the difference. Choice acknowledges that we all have unique personalities, unique likes and unique dislikes, regardless of our income level. We aim to express God's love and care while upholding these three values. We see it as we host clothing sales, allowing people to contribute through small financial contribution by exchanging their own used clothes or contributing their time to running the sale. We see it when our Girls Connect group took a tour of a post-secondary school campus, empowering the girls with an experience and knowledge they may not have been able to have otherwise. We see it when we partner with folks living in the community, rather than coming in assuming we know what is needed and that we have all the answers. We see it when we build up leaders within the community to co-lead with us and eventually lead themselves. We see it when we provide parents the opportunity to select their gifts at From Jesus With Love, rather than giving them a standard toy that a child of a certain age and gender is supposed to like. It's through these varied connections with low-income communities that we get to express dignity to those we meet. Hello, my name is Michelle and I lead our Barnabas Refugee Ministry. A gift card, a transit pass, a card with a prayer or a word of encouragement, small gifts that have the potential to become so much more. The gift is an invitation to affirm that God is with them, to care and provide, an invitation to friendship as a connection is made, an invitation to belong in God's family of faith and to participate together in the ministry of the church. It says you're not alone, we're all in this together. In this time of pandemic and isolation, these gifts have traveled all over our region through your commitment to reach out and continue the mission of the church. When the lockdown began last spring, many of our newcomers immediately lost jobs through business closures and shutdowns. Your generous giving to Barnabas Missions allowed us to respond in kind in significant ways. As I could tell my leaders, if someone has a need, we can help. No one needs to go hungry. No one needs to feel unsafe. Thank you for making that vital care possible. God had already provided through his church. 
As ministry moved online, my leadership team began arranging one-to-one -one connections, hoping that no one would feel alone or forgotten. Jim began connecting with a family who had only been in Canada a short time. They formed a friendship over months of texts and phone calls and the great help of Google Translate. They journeyed together through job losses and new beginnings, a canceled refugee hearing, the challenges of online school, and all of the stress we've experienced during the pandemic. New connections were made as English and Spanish speaking WMBRs brought gifts and words of encouragement. Together, they helped the family out of an unhealthy living situation into an apartment owned by a WMB family. Six months of significant connection for Jim and this family. And here's the thing. They just met face to face for the first time at a September mission event. That is the reality of ministry and relationship today. And it's a reminder that God will always prevail. He is faithful to provide a way for his people. Hi, I'm Mary Ellen Tierney, pastor of Barnabas Victoria Hills. A lot changed in the ministry this year, but one thing didn't change. The feeling of community, family, belonging remained. Being with people for the long run or for seasons as God leads, life on life is what it's all about. Let me give you some examples. The women in the Saturday morning ESL Bible study becoming like sisters, offering help with childcare when needed and encouraging each other in life's trials. Watching the Holy Spirit moving one of the women toward joining the family of God. A young man who we have known since he was eight, encouraging him as he goes through the tough and demoralizing process of trying to find a job. He counts WMB as home, where some of his homies are. Family means goodbyes. This summer, we released a young family to another part of Canada to a new start in a professorship. Two longtime volunteers have gone through health concerns this year, and some students supplied a great variety of food, causing one of those assisted to say, hmm, what country's food should I take out of the freezer today? Sometimes, students return after many years, like S, who had a dream, telling her to go back to learn English, make friends, because we are her place of belonging. We heard about life, from the pain of miscarriage to the joy of a new baby, sometimes within the space of a week. Volunteers giving their piano to a newcomer family who could now use it more than they could. On the flip side, a former student saying they wanted to donate money because they were on their feet now in Canada and could give back because that's what community does. Us literally moving someone out of an abusive family and community situation to another part of the city where she could be safer. Phil and Bev Yancey supplying well over 100 bikes now through the bike ministry. A group we'd been ESL Bible studying together with, taking us out for lunch and telling us, you know that servant leadership Jesus talked about in our Bible study? That is who you Bible study leaders are. God is indeed good, and I am thankful for the Barnabas Vic Hills family. Wow. Every year, I cry when I hear those stories. I can't help but be moved with the heartbeat of God in his just love for the people that we're talking about in these stories. I can't help but be impacted by the amazing things people are doing in the name of Jesus through the ministry of WMB. Church, I know you're with me in this. And this year is unique because we're not all in the building together, sharing in this, enjoying the stories and looking around and witnessing one another, weeping with the heartbeat of God as the Holy Spirit impacts us. But we're still asking you to do the same three things we've always asked at this time of year. To pray, to serve, and to give. To pray for this ministry and all those who are marginalized in KW and around the world. To serve in this ministry and sign up to be on mission right here in our own city by helping the marginalized in all kinds of ways. And to give big. Today we have a special offering just to care for our Barnabas missions. And our goal for that offering today is a quarter of a million dollars. $250,000. Our biggest goal ever. And 
it's online. So that's really big. And we need you to help us to achieve our huge offering goal today of $250,000. We have raised this in the past, but never had this big of a goal. Paul Chin, the director of this mission, has said in the past that we need about $400 a household for those that would normally attend our services. And we know that not every household that comes to WMB could give in that way, but we'd encourage you to give. That also means that some of you will need to give two or three households worth, and a bunch of you will need to give 10 households worth. And honestly, I believe some of you will probably even be called to give your biggest gift ever, giving maybe 100 households worth for us to get this total or more. So let's take a moment to listen to God together, to ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us, because I believe that he'll direct each of us in what we should give to hear specifically from him so that we can give with a cheerful heart. Let's pray. Father, hear our cry for the marginalized in KW. Let us be the response of your hands and your feet. Let us be those who serve and give and respond that people might know your incredible love for them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Church, thank you for your ongoing generosity to this ministry. Pray and decide what God's calling you to give. I'm so thankful for you. I'm so thankful for your heart and care for the marginalized. I'm so thankful for what you've already given to From Jesus With Love, Adopt a Family, and so many other things this Christmas. But would you give in this way would you give in the way that Jesus is calling you to respond to the cross and his love for you, leading you to give in this offering again this year? God bless you and have a great week.
yourself down Raising up the broken to Thank you. Thank you, John and Jam and Chris and Mary Ellen and Michelle and Wayne and Steph. Thank you for sharing your hearts with us. I have so much to think about. This has been something Brian and I have been thinking and praying about the ways that we can participate in how we give together caring and loving for those in the world that Jesus calls us to love. Wherever you find yourself in this this week, we just encourage you to spend some time in prayer to talk about it with your home group. If you are joining us for our Sunday morning um, online premiere, then we are going to be heading over to the virtual foyer and to our Zoom prayer rooms where you can have a time of confidential prayer or you can gather to chat with some people. So you can join us either in the virtual foyer or the prayer room. We would love to see your smiling faces there. We might even start to see some Christmas trees in the background this week. Who knows? Something to look forward to. Because next week we do start our December series. We start to get ready because it's Advent. And we look for him, for Emmanuel, for God with us, the long-awaited Messiah. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next week.